and gentlemen, our first speaker tonight is Chris Pearson. Chris joined our club this past June and has added a refreshing aspect of perspective and light-heartedness. She is an experienced Toastmaster of several years. She is obviously a morning person, <laughs> since she, and she is currently serving in the office of club president for Sierra Sunrise Toastmasters. I am anxious to hear her speech tonight as she demonstrates her ability to do research and then present the information in what I anticipate to be in her own special way. I am sure we are in for a treat. Let's welcome Chris as she presents to us, introducing a speaker, Chris Pearson. All right, I am here to talk about what just happened. I was introduced. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, has your attention been captured? Are you on the edge of your seat in anticipation of what I have to say? Mm -hmm. That is what a good introduction would do. I appreciate and am very grateful for the kind introduction that you gave me, John. However, not all introductions are good. One of America's great lecturers, Mark Twain, believed the introductions were all bad. He would not allow anybody to introduce him when he spoke. In fact, he introduced himself. He would go out on the stage, introduce himself. He said that this saved him the trouble of training someone to introduce him right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cover how to create and deliver a proper introduction. An important point is to gain the audience's attention. That first sentence should grab your interest right then and there. You could develop a catchy phrase. Radio commentator Paul Harvey had a famous catchphrase. He would say, you know what the news is, in a minute, you're going to hear the rest of the story. A proper introduction is like that. It gives you that hook. Makes you anticipate what the rest of the story will be. Dale Carnegie, in his book, Effective Speaking, created a formula for introducing a speaker. It's abbreviated TIS. Toastmasters International endorses this formula also. T stands for topic. This is where we tell the audience the title and subject of the presentation. Your audience may have just been engaging in a meal, having conversation about who knows what. Knowing the introduction and the subject of it refocuses their mindset, takes them from what they've been doing to what they're going to hear now. I is for importance. In this step, we tell the audience why it's worth their time to listen. What's in it for them? Why is this important? The speaker should be warm and sincere and energetic so that the audience will be excited to hear what is to be said. S stands for speaker. We want to highlight the speaker's expertise and establish the speaker's credentials. It helps to contact the speaker ahead of time to get some information on their topic to get some information on their background, their experience, education, to create, you're able then to create their authority and expertise. The speaker may give you 
you a written introduction. Do not read this word for word. I am being just that horrible example of not reading something word for word right now. So I, I probably don't need to read this word for word, but since I want to be that example, don't use their introduction as a script. The speaker could actually tell you, thanks, you read it just as I wrote it, except you left out the word handsome. <laughs> <laughs> you want to find out what the speaker's experience is. You want to establish their credibility. There is some information, oops, I mean, sorry. <laughs> The high tech green just okay. So, okay. And it should be brief to the point. You want to leave out some things. For instance, you might not not want to tell about the speaker's recent hemorrhoid surgery. <laughs> unless it happens to be their copy. Absolutely. <laughs> you might you don't want to take this opportunity to glorify yourself. And where is my crown? <laughs> You want to refrain from giving their speech. Westside Toastmasters in Southern California shared this poem. My sympathy lies with a speaker whose knees grow suddenly weaker as the Toastmasters lengthy patter turns out to be the speaker's subject matter. Hmm. Don't say their speech for them. <laughs> Toastmasters International in their Better Speaking series creating an introduction says that this introduction of a speaker should be like a mini speech. Even though it's short, it still contains all the elements of a full speech. It has an opening where this is where you do grab the audience's attention. It should have the body where you tell why the audience, why the speaker is qualified to address the audience. And then the conclusion where you will say the speaker's title of his speech and his name. On the Tonight Show, Ed McMahon's famous introduction of Johnny Carson was simple yet effective. Here's Johnny. That could possibly work for you. We want to encourage that, okay, we'll encourage that audience to read the speaker warmly. Most likely there's not an applause sign, so it's up to you to lead the applause. And that cues the speaker to come up. Applaud the speaker until that speaker reaches you, shake their hand, sit down, but don't walk in front of them. Every speaker does deserve a thoughtful and helpful introduction. Your job is to make them look good. Smile enthusiastically. You want to look like you are honored and thrilled this person is coming to speak, even if you aren't. You will set the speaker up for success. Well, it's